all who are not watching it at. Hello to those people. I'll say hello to the rest of the people. After the ad, please, for them. Nah, that wasn't very good. That wasn't very good. I've, I've had better. I've had better jingles to start the show. <laughs> nah, you can't win all of them. I, do I have to hit this button to make people... Oh, I can... That's right, let's change it to live chat. Am I first? Marv is first. Hey! <laughs> Just wanted to hit the thumb. Have a good yell. I don't know that that's what's going to happen. It generally ends up happening. <laughs> so I figured, I assume, at some point, I will yell it loud. <sighs> Complain about something. Even though one of my resolutions for this year is to look at the good things in the world. And I think I'm succeeding at that in general. But sometimes... You know, <laughs> someone's watching The Simpsons again. I don't know when the last time I actually watched The Simpsons was, but I have watched a lot of Simpsons throughout my time on The Rock that we are spinning on. I have watched a lot of it. Is it the show that I have watched, spent the most time watching? Hmm. Television program that I have spent the most time watching. Maybe. Because, I mean, it goes back a long way. And for many years, I watched many episodes. Maybe. Maybe I've spent more time in front of the Simpsons than any single other television show. Maybe. Um, MASH would be up there. Because we watched, we watched MASH every night in university when I was living in a townhouse with buddies. Every night for like three years. Uh, maybe. I don't know. When I found Parks and Rec, I watched Parks and Rec pretty much on repeat. Well, I didn't like watch it really, but when it was on Netflix and I discovered it eventually. It basically just lived on repeat for quite some time. But it over, I mean, when you count, when you think about The Simpsons and like even a half hour every week, plus all the reruns and stuff for a decade or more, that's tough. Um, I did watch Amber Blockbuster. I uh, I rented and then kept the entire series of Battlestar Galactica, like the the remake of Battlestar Galactica uh, with Katie Sackhoff and um, James uh, James Earl Jones. Um, Who played Adama? Why can I not remember his name? Um, but that basically on live on repeat. Edward James almost. Thank you, Tim. Uh, that lived on repeat on the DVD player in my apartment for quite some time. Uh. Yeah, it would be one of those. Did I see Amy? Hi, Amy. Amy's Doctor Who. Hey, Bobbert in the house. Not a guy. Stargate SG-1, Atlantis, and Universe. What is Universe?
I don't think I've seen universe. <laughs> Can't have that many episodes and be good. I think I would have heard of a show called Universe that was good. <laughs> Universe was the failed third Stargate show. Oh, that's why. <laughs> okay. So it was like Firefly. It was really good, but then didn't last. Amy says, hi, Moam. <laughs> Got to meet the professor when I was in Silverdale, Washington. He lived in Bainbridge Island. I never did. I never did Doctor Who. My brother was a big Doctor Who, I think. Uh, just never got into it, never tried. I have nothing negative or positive to say. I've watched the classic series far more than the new ones. Tom Baker is my favorite. I don't know who that is. See, that's that's how good I am at Doctor Who. John's here. How are you, my friend? It had the Battlestar Galactic style documentary filming with shaky cam. It's too much of a departure from Star. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That was what was cool. I mean, one of the coolest parts of Battlestar Galactica was that it felt you like you were there. Like it was the office style. Like the ca the camera was almost a carry like you were almost a character that was following along um, wife loves the jewelry box sweet i'm happy to hear it it was if i don't uh, say so myself it was it's pretty nice <laughs> john bought the when i was making four jewelry boxes uh he bought the one for wife that was the full divider half tray so full depth on one half and then tray inside so half shelf on the left side jewelry box and uh, once again i do appreciate that my friend the fourth doctor dom baker is the toe is the toothy doctor with curly hair and a long scarf uh, did you see these th i don't I don't know what that means. I, I, I've never watched the show. Like, I don't think I have seen an episode of the show. Nope. I don't think I have. Just never, never bothered. It's probably really good. People who love it really love it. It's probably really good. I am enjoying um, it's called Umbrella Academy that is one of is in the rotation of this, I'm warm um, we do family movie night every Sunday and currently wife's choice for family movie night is continuing the Umbrella Academy series uh, it's pretty cool some interesting characters and things in that. Um, it's right. It's got that right level of I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm okay with that kind of idea. It's not. It's not. I'm confused. I don't want to watch this. It's I'm confused, and I like that I'm confused. It's right at that level. Why is there a talking monkey, Butler? Still don't know. But I'm okay not knowing. Because I think I'll find out. I loved Umbrella Academy, at least the first season. How many seasons are there? I didn't know anything about this show. Until... 
wife was like, my choice this week is we're going to start the Umbrella Academy. I was like, well, it's your choice. I don't get, like, don't know anything about this. It's good. Good characters. Interesting storyline. Monkey Butler. Talking Monkey Butler. Robot Mom. Um, heroes? Super? It, it's, it, yeah, it's interesting. You'll find out the Butler story later. It's not pleasant. I cannot imagine it being a pleasant story. Like, it feels... I already think it's going to be kind of rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy type situation or something equally unpleasant uh, I love the comics and I enjoy the show I think three now three three seasons okay I thought it was a stat holiday. No, that's that was Friday. That was yesterday. Yesterday was the stat. I know. I haven't watched TV for at least six years. Well, I don't really watch TV. There are a few television programs. That's a Netflix, I think, technically. But what is TV? This is an ex existential question. What is TV? these days anyway if you watch it on a television are you watching tv <laughs> doesn't matter I, once a week i sit in front of the thing on the wall in the living room for a couple hours with fam just looked it up it's four seasons now I got a long way to go. I just finished the new Reacher series on Prime. Don't know what that is either. Jack Reacher? Jack. Is it? It's like Tom Clancy? So you're a spy? I get confused between all of the things. I, uh... We've almost finished season one on my choice of the rotation. We've been watching Rings of Power, which is better than I expected based on the, the fandom's outrage. Um, but I can understand some of the problems that people were having. I do think that they for how much it cost them to make that series. I think they could have put a little more of their effort into the physical effects and costuming and things. The The armor looks like cheap plastic garbage. They should have hired better people to make the armor and, and costuming, I think. No, sorry, but my, my, no offense to the people who worked on the wardrobe department of Rings of Power, but you're not very good at that. <laughs> uh, but just the story's good. And the, the, the writing is okay. <laughs> and it's not a waste of my time. And sometimes that's all it needs to be. We've talked about that before. Way better than the movies. Not a spy. Oh, I thought you were going to say... I, I've got to go back. I was like, it absolutely is not better than the movies. What be, the, the Reacher one. Better than the movie. Is that the one that uh, John Krasinski was in in the movies? Was he Reacher? What did he do? Wasn't he a spy guy? Or something? Looking forward to season two of Rings of Power. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if we finished season one yet or not. I don't know where it ends. 
I agree. The wardrobe was kind of bad. I've seen better cosplay. Yeah, right? Like, it, it kind of felt plasticky, like Hasbro. Kind of like... Um, like, it felt like you could have got some of that at Costco. That's Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. But isn't that the same? <laughs> uh, it's good to have you back, Amy. He was in the office. John Krasinski. Or Krasinski. Yes, he was in the office. He was Dwight in the office. Speaking of Battlestar Galactica. Ooh, that might have been a little subtle. I liked it. I thought that was pretty good. He was, he was Jim, not Dwight. That was the joke. Well, that was one of a couple of jokes there. There was, there were a series of jokes there. Identity theft is one of them. Yes. Identity theft was one of the jokes. Uh, isn't he Shazam as well? No, Shazam is actually played by, um, uh, hold on. The guy from, um, the guy from Brooklyn Nine Nine, and uh, and also the Doctor Show Scrubs. Bratch, somebody Bratch. That's that's it's Scrubs, Brooklyn Nine Nine, and Shazam. Uh, that's that guy. Todd, someone else played Shazam. Yeah, um, Zach Braff. That's him. Thanks, Amy. Zach Braff. He played all those guys. Zach Braff was Shazam and the Brooklyn Nine-Nine and, um, and Scrubs. I look out. I am I'm funny today. That's cool. I'm glad I'm in a decent mood. I'm glad I'm in a decent mood today. Considering that the thumbnail and the title of the show is old man yells at cloud or whatever. Might not. Like I'm actually I'm enjoying myself. This is I'm having fun. Shaq played Kazam. Shaq did it. He did play Kazam, as did Sinbad. Fun fact. Remember Sinbad? He played Kazam in the, the Genie movie. Absolutely everywhere with your answers. Yeah, and they're all good. They're all absolutely good. That was all so wrong. No! This is, they're, it, these are perfectly cremulent answers. Spent the past two days cleaning up a flooded kitchen from a faulty brand new dishwasher. That sounds rad. I... No, that actually sounds really shit. They said that movie never existed. Yeah. Mm. They 
said that Berenstein Bears didn't have an EI in it too, but Sinbad Shazam's Mandela effect. Shit. Yep, nip, nip, yep. We're on different timelines then, my friend. We got our timelines got mashed together. And I was on the one where Sinbad was in a genie movie. And the Bernstein Bears was E I N. E I N? It's a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, something. Dun, dun. Here. Oh, my back hurt. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes, old man. Tails of club. Oh, my back hurts. I had to work too hard. Man, people are mean to each other. And Fruit of the Loom had a cornucopia. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> back wouldn't hurt if you built a real shop stool. Well, my back wouldn't hurt if you shut up. <laughs> no. Uh, I do need to, I need new footwear for walking on concrete all the time, every day, all day. Um, I need to have not been paralyzed on the side of a ski hill when I was 16. Um, and yeah, I should probably buy a proper bed at some point in my life. I don't think I've ever owned a new bed. Have you guys ever like bought a new bed from like a bed store, like a mattress? I don't think I've ever either not it, the my, the bed that I've slept in. I don't think has ever either not has either ever not been a hand me down from somebody else that replaced their bed and I took their old one because it was better than mine, or uh, yeah, pretty much that I guess. I've never slept in a bed that was new like brand new mattress from a mattress factory <sighs> mike looking at your t-shirt did you happen to watch the helvetica movie i want to say that i did but i may be just remembering i'm falsely remembering doing that because i can't picture it I bought this shirt because it's my one of my favorite fonts and then I saw this shirt and I was like that shirt has one of my favorite fonts written in various thicknesses I I must own that because <laughs> don't you guys have a favorite font or like a, a selection of fonts that you enjoy Doesn't, it, doesn't everybody have like a few favorite fonts? We bought a big fancy memory foam one and had to swap it the next day for a regular spring style. The next day, you slept on it one time? Do a bed project and get a bed in a box video sponsorship. Yeah, go just lease a mattress. I get one of those inflatable ones. Everybody else has done one of those, so you make a make a box, make a square to put it in. Not a fan of any sans serifs. They all have their place. Sans serif works better in a lot of situations. 
like electronically most in in print in physical print you're 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 right 90 percent of the time electronic digitally a lot of time you keep your serifs off it it's going to be more legible for people that mattress nearly killed one night you can give yourself a shot to get used to it webdings <laughs> uh, i like my serifs i appreciate a good serif it's a weird conversation to have. I'm pretty geeky. So, makes sense that we're having this discussion. Helvetica, I think, is, in a lot of ways, it hits a lot of good points. It's... There's a reason it's a very, very popular font. There are good reasons it's a very, very popular font. Times New Roman is a is an amazing font. You can't it, just because it's everywhere all the time and you you don't even notice it. There's a reason for that. I'm trying to find a Les Paul background so I can. One off my sticker when I said, "That a guy." Speaking of guitars, I made more progress this week. I am now on the non-live show guitar. Maha, pachow, pachow, pachow. Contoured. I need to thin it out a little bit more. It's still a little bit chunky. But neck, fretboard is on and flushed up, and the profile is almost a little, little thinner in this dimension. Um, I, was, I got to, doing more spoke shaving this week. Um, yeah. So, neck is just about, we're almost even. Live show guitar and non-live show guitar are relatively close to being back to uneven. Oh, that's going to be attractive. And then... Hopefully that'll line up when I wrote the neck pocket. Mm -hmm. eh? Couple more steps up the path, down the road. is a good font I'm just trying to be contrary you're not just trying you're doing a very good job trade you a custom telecaster for that one maybe it's the best offer I've had so far <laughs> almost done over half let's go with over half when I get the neck pocket routed and the pickup cavity routed, they'll essentially be in the same place, which I would say the other one is about two thirds of the way. I'm close to being over two thirds of the way done two guitars. Yeah. I got excited. 
It's a weird way to start a sentence. Because uh, the guitars, yeah, okay. I go in and out of excitement for the guitars this past week. I actually, I started a thing. Because you, you've met me, right? Like, I, I, I start things when I shouldn't. Um, and I'm excited for a project again. I'm not telling. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Remember the little chunks? Of yellow birch the logs the log sections that i picked up off the side of the road when the city was taking down trees and i like stopped and grabbed a couple little sort of like 15, 14 to 16 inch long seven eight inch across chunks of birch that they had chopped up and just left there i did some i'm I'm breaking one of those down into wood that I can use to make a thing with. And I'm going to go from chunk of log to finish thing in one go. It's the first time I've ever gone from log to thing. And I think the thing is going to be pretty slick. Love the bloopers video. Yeah, a, I'm professional. Mine will be fully playable. I don't even know how you know that. You, you don't know. You can't play. Do you send every one of them out for testing? Also, this might be. We don't know that it's not going to be. That was a mean thing to say. That's mean. That's bad friending. This one might be absolutely playable. It's going to be prettier than yours. <laughs> Have each one professionally set up. I had my last one, my only one, professionally set up also. Every guitar that I've made has been professionally set up. Mm. <laughs> Fucking guy. As set up as it could be. There's like two dead spots. It's like on one string, it's on 11, I think. And on one, on a different string, I think it's on 13. It's... Wish I knew how to do it all myself. I could save money. Yeah, but just, you just wrap it into the cost of the thing for the person who's paying you. What does it matter? If you don't want to know how to play guitar, well, why bother? They can pay the extra 125 bucks for the setup that you're building into the price of the thing. I don't know. What does it cost you to get a guitar set up down there? What, what do you mean by setup in terms of like fret crowning and polishing and leveling and intonation and the whole bit? Because I, th I think I can probably get that done for a buck fifty Canadian. No, I can get it. Do the fret work myself. Have them do the intonation. Hundred bucks just to intonate it. You find a new guy. you find a new guy but you get i get my i can get my guitar intonated at the music shop for free for buying a few sets of strings if i want i can just be like
you're paying too much for that service. This is Mike. I didn't understand a word of that. They were all words. And they were all used properly. Zach Braff. <laughs> Someone pressed the sap button. Uh, I don't even know what that is. What is the sap button? What does that mean? Is that a joke I should know? Are you being hilarious? Anybody else have a favorite font? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Might look around. He does sell my full guitars in his shop and doesn't charge you a commission. So yeah, okay, and you're not overpaying for that service then. Never mind. Never mind, just stick with him. If he's giving you all of the money from selling your guitars out of his shop, you pay the man the $100 for a setup, for an intonation on the guitar. Because that, like, 40, 40% 40 some places take, 50-50 some places take. Yeah, pay that guy. Never mind. I changed my answer. Comic Sans, because I'm a feral goblin who likes to make people unhappy. I think, okay, I'm going to dis, first of all, I'm going to disagree with you that you are a feral goblin. I think that you're a fantastic human being. Number two, I don't believe you that you like to make people unhappy because otherwise, I wouldn't think that you're a fantastic human being. And C, if it's true that you like to make people unhappy, I think maybe we should, uh, we should look into why that is and maybe remedy that. Because it, it, it makes me happy to make people happy. It actually makes me unhappy to make people unhappy. I like the Founders Grotesque font. Don't know that one off the top of my head. My favorite font is Elder Furthark. And yes, Mike, you can download it. such a weird show I love that this show exists and that it goes where it goes and who knows and it snows in the winter it, it's just, I wanted to keep going with the rhyming it didn't work uh, the fact that we can just go in whatever direction happens and you guys are still keep just coming back and hanging out I, I love that thinking my third guitar member this year I'm making three stringed instruments uh, I think my third one might be a bass and it might be it might be something super cool and rad and geeky my sister made me an offer today to buy my stabilizing business and customers to expand on what she does haven't decided on it yet 
I think that's just a matter of do you want to keep doing it or do you not want to keep doing it? If it whether or not it's making you money and whatever, whatever. Is that how you want to spend your time? Like you got, we, we all have a limited amount of time, Paul. And let's face it, you're on the back. What? You're, you got like a 10th left. Is that how you want to spend your last couple years? <laughs> oh, I am funny today. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, probably a little bit of that. Make a ukulele so you can practice acoustic building. I think... I did consider going acoustic with the third one, but I think I want the ease of what I already know how to do with an artistic, geeky flair. Let's face it, even, even a, a ukulele, an acoustic ukulele is going to take me months and months and months. I could do... I could do an electric bass in a weekend. After I finish these next couple, I could turn around an electric bass in a weekend. Because not only do you not need any talent to play bass, you also don't need a lot of it to make one. Man, I am, I am funny today. less funny because I keep pointing it out but that was also pretty good my grandparents all lived to over a hundred dad was almost 90 when he passed see yeah you got you got four or five left I guess I'm gonna try to be I'll try to be nicer that was I'm building a Tele Acoustasonic guitar. I think we had that discussion, didn't we? And I was trying to figure out if that's what I have, but no. I have a Teleacoustic. I want to build a violin and an F-style mandolin. I want to build all of the things. Will I get to? No. If I ever stop working and retire, I'll probably pass quickly. Well, yeah. We've talked about that, too. About, like, what does retirement mean? Stop being productive. Stop doing things that you enjoy. Yeah, why bother? Why bother being around anymore? I did seriously think about acoustic being the third one, but I think I would rather just like crush out a quick garbage bass just to like have the guitars done. And then my, I got my two pieces of two significant pieces of furniture that I need to build this year. Um, that I have somewhat decided on. I have, I'm narrowing it down slowly. I'm pretty close to deciding what those are going to be. The shop reno. The, the charity build. It might not happen. It takes a lot of work to put one of those on and I haven't done any planning on it yet. Um, the charity community fundraiser thing. Do a hurdy gurdy and you turn yourself around. And that's what it's all about. 
I had a final heart doctor visit this week. A fine? That's your last heart doctor visit? So you're closer to the end than I thought. They determined nothing wrong with heart arteries or anything. Strong heart, no clogged arteries. Did he just say he was going to make something quick? Yes, I did. A, ch a quick garbage base. Meh. It's not. It's not. It's not. But I could hypothetically crush out a base in a weekend and be like, that's the third one. Moving on. You guys had a little bug. Could do like a crimson style, crimson guitar style, like live build, timed live build thing. It's an idea, but I want it to be cooler than that. But that would be cool to see just how quickly I could crush out a quick garbage bass guitar. It's an idea. It'd be even cooler because it would be, I could also call it like, how quick could I make, can I make my first ever bass guitar? Or making my first bass guitar in a Saturday. And I would probably make at least $17 from that video. I think enough people would watch that that I could make $17. I'm going to have myself a smokerette, get a new beer, have a little stretch. I haven't really complained that much yet tonight. Pretty proud of myself for that. I'm actually, I'm, I'm having a good time. You guys having a good time? Oh, God. Just once in a while, it just really tightens right up and talk to, um, resin Classes today. Boxy resin. Charcuterie boards. Classes today. Nope. One epoxy resin ocean wave bowl. Class and one charcuterie board. Making making ocean wave patterns out of epoxy. Right. Wow. Certainly spring feeling. Feels like spring. That is for damn sure. Fancy mandolin. I got them and I used to build a mandolin for Paul Simon's kid about seven years ago. Wow. Hola, tira. I like Paul Simon. He, I saw an interview with him not that long ago, though, and he does not look well. He's... I mean, we all get old. It, it, it's a thing that's going to happen if we're lucky. But damn, he looked very, very old. I met Paul Simon through his wife. I hung out with her before her band got popular. I don't know if I know who Paul Simon's wife is and her band.
met Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, he yelled at you. Okay. Edie Burkell and the New Bohemians. Oh, okay. I do know that name. I don't know if I've ever heard them. Mrs. Simon? No, it's not. It's not, Chris. They, they didn't, they, they broke the mold. They didn't do the traditional. It's a ridiculous, um, yeah, anyway, anyway, not gonna. Not gonna. Oh. So hopefully this week I'll get the neck pocket routed on the non-live show guitar. Maybe the pickup cavity routed. Maybe do the unboxing and trying the cabinet scraper video. Now that I'll have some things to use it on. Um... So I got I'm having trouble transferring files. I have like a couple of YouTube videos worth of files that I'm having problems getting from my phone to where they need to be so that I can make them into videos. <coughs> but maybe I'll record another one this week. Who knows? I can never tell from one week to the next how things are going to go. Ah, that's enough of this. I wanted the rest of that, but I didn't want the brightness. <laughs> Just in my dingy cave. It's too much bright with the door open. Buy a standalone video camera. I have one of those, thank you very much. <laughs> need my cameraman back. I need my director of photography. Actually, Mikey, Mikey B, if you're still here, uh, I think the next one that we do, we should do on the camcorder. I'll get a new memory card that doesn't like to corrupt files, hopefully. Doesn't corrupt files and mess with things. And we'll give that a go. I, I bought it because it has a, it, it's a 4K camcorder with a flip around screen and everything. It's good. I want to use it. It's just it's breaking out of the what you're comfortable with and what you're used to using. Old dog, new tricks. Shake fist at cloud. I thought YouTubers used GoPros. Some of them. Some of them do. Oh, I like that shirt. You show up on time, Peterson. We already had a whole discussion about shirt, the shirt and fonts. Do you have a favorite font? <laughs> Mister came in late. Would you like to share your favorite font? <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite shirts. I'll see my way out. You can stay. I just, I, I had to point out that you're late to the party, my friend. Tar but you've been marked tardy. Don't use that term in front of Abed. Mm. 
Ooh. Two points. Two Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff points. Been, you've been marked tardy. Don't use that term in front of Abed. Two. It's not that hard. That's why it's only worth two Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff points. Amy likes Comic Sans because she's a goblin or something. No, because... I think... I think that was a troll comment. I don't think she actually likes Comic Sans. I think she was... She was being self-deprecating, which is a fine thing to do here. We're all, we're all friends. We can appreciate that. Can I get a shirt in a bag mailed to you? Sure. You, you just want, like, something that I've worn with, like, pit stains and... I'll just throw it in a bag and mail it to you. Because I know you still, as soon as you pay for the beard, sure it'll be cheaper. And I don't want to know what you're going to do with it. Can't be this one, though. You can't have this one. This one, I don't know that I'll find another one of these. I don't even know where I got it. <coughs> not pit stains. It's like fart water, you know? Like, I'm not attractive enough to smell, to sell fart water. So, can I sell a pit stain t shirt? Kaduk might be interested. From the Helvetica shirt store. I'm sure if I looked for another one, I could find it. This one, I don't even remember where I, like I said, I don't remember where I got it. I stumbled upon it and I was like, mine. <laughs> Tyler, I'm sorry. I hope you didn't run away because I was mean. It was fun. Okay. You came late, so you didn't see all the guitar, the wonderful guitar work that I've been doing. I'm a luthier. I'm still here, but my one foot was out the door. Well, what was the other one doing? Some kind of jig? You stick around. There's a Helvetica shirt where the font is shaped like Metallica. That'd be cool. With a Helvetica with the angles and like the metal yeah I, I i would rock that i would wear that mm. yeah that seems like a thing i should have Because I'm a nerd. And I like music. Just messing with you. I wasn't leaving. Well, you never know with you. Sometimes you're too busy playing your fun your fun games with your real friends. Maybe you were like, oh, I'm just on my way out to go play my fun games with my real friends. Gotta keep you on your toes. It's not really. So we're just, we're all making our way through the world. That's all we're doing. One foot in front of the other. 
What did I do there? I don't think I even noticed that one. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I used hand planes just a, a couple of days ago. If we were still playing bingo. Well, it was on the, the, the bingo sheet was for stuff that happened on the live show, though. So, yeah. Anyway, used three different hand planes on Wednesday. Uh, hey, Mike, I accidentally ordered two of the six-inch cabinet rasps from Lee Valley. Are you interested in the second one? Uh, sure. The, the hand stitch cheapos, the Lee Valley brand, the one that I got the nine. These guys, you, you got the smaller one. Yeah. I I will pay you four dollars less than you paid for it. As penance for your accidentally ordering it. <laughs> They'll take it back. You could send it back. Deal? Okay. Well, you also still owe me a fret job for uh, that planer that you only ever took the parts off of and never used and then threw in the recycling bin. So, I th we actually never really agreed on what you were... Well, it doesn't matter. Helvetica songs. Enter Sands Man. Oh, I like that. Sad times. Sad but times new Roman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like Enter Sands Man. I like that actually quite a lot. Seraphterium. found a coffee cup Helvetica is crushing my soul and one that says Helvetica it's not a font it's a typeface I will accept all of these things as gifts <laughs> for whom the web dings <laughs> Not bad, not bad. I think I like Seraphterium. Seraphterium! Eve me be! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Italica. Ooh. Oh, it's hell. Helvetica is the, is the band name, and they're making songs about fonts. Oh, now I want this album. I want a cover, a, a Metallica cover band to make an album about fonts. <laughs> to Ariel Black. Nice. Yes. Just 
you, I'm just going to have Metallica songs running through my head now, and I'm going to try to put in font names. I'm going to have trouble falling asleep tonight. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's all your fault. When I have insomnia tonight is all your fault, because I'm going to be trying to make Metallica songs out of font names. Good work. I almost like Conic Sans, Comic Sansitarium. I almost like that better. Comic Sansitarium. And then all the rest of the lyrics could be about how much that font sucks and pisses people off and Comic Sans, uh, it's got the extra word. I think it could slide in nicely, though. In any case. I want the sun to go down so I can open that door and smoke whenever I want. Um, anybody else making anything cool this week? Peterson, what are you working on these days, my friend? Did you make a, a Yerg's Cup contribution? I didn't get around to it. It's almost over, I think, and none of my efforts are going to be done in time. in progress almost done isn't it tomorrow i thought it was the end of I have to make seven telly bodies tomorrow of course you do make i'm waiting for you to read you the email i sent you can you summarize it right now and i'll just answer it live on the show Uh, made a little kit car with the kid and bought a new jigsaw. Hey, what kind of jigsaw do you get? A Ryobi? That's, that's your platform. Are you, aren't you a Ryobi platform? April 24th, I think. Oh, I thought it was like any day now. Todd made a couple bowls. I did see one of them. I think I saw, it was like a... Not a segmenty thing, but a bowl from a board thing. Was that you? Yes, you have a screw. I... Oh, this one? I'm going to have Bodies Guitars at the Dallas Guitar Show this year. I thought that already happened. I thought I saw somebody else posting about, like, with a photo of their booth at the Dallas Guitar Show. Or what show was that then? Doesn't matter. I yeah, that's cool. That's rad. Been working on our camper van. Hey. It's in May. Okay, sweet. Years past April 3rd, but we're running the cup so it turns over on his birthday. So you have four days or something. Get to work, yo. I I could finish one of these in four days if I really got down to it. Oh, I get it. On his never mind. Misunderstood. His birthday is April 24th. It's all become clear. You have almost a month. Uh trying to clean out the shed, but it keeps raining. Yep. That's not awesome. Dovetail, but that was the one. Yeah, that was that was a cool board. That was a cool bowl. Yeah. Finish the crotch Osage Orange Bowl. Don't remember if I saw that one or not. So what your Tim, your email was I have a thumbscrew. 
Why does that require an answer? Is it, is, would you like it? Is that the rest of the email? I have a thumb screw. Would you like it? Yes. Here we go. I don't have to. I don't need to. <laughs> need you to check the diameter of the hole in your scraper. How am I even going to do that? Uh. Can it be approximate? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that this, I have digital calipers, but I don't think there's a battery operational. That's not a digital caliper at all. Uh, that's a digital protractor. Uh, there's two different screw sizes for these. Okay. I don't think I have a battery, but I can probably get you an approximate. If that's good enough. Let me go. Six and a half millimeters. Just just over six millimeters. Is that close enough to for you to know whether or not it's one or the other? here did you tell everyone how you taught resin classes today and killed it i did tell everybody that i did teach two resin classes today and i have not yet mentioned that i killed it but yes i did no he just talked about how hard he worked today that's not what happened i talked about how i am going to be doing the resin charcuterie board ocean wave classes and I did my first two today and that's it that's all that was said it was fun everybody did it had a good time and the one I have is 4.1 I have the larger hole yeah I do that that wasn't Digital calipers convert to metric. My screw is only 4.1. Oh, okay. I have the bigger hole. <laughs> what did he kill now? What did who kill now? Me? I haven't killed anything in a long time. Keep up, keep it up though. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Ugh. Take the scraper to your local hardware store and find a screw. I think it is, I think Stanley has a specific like Stanley thread pattern though, don't they? I've never looked into it, obviously. <laughs> I have a new cabinet scraper from Veritas to open up and try when the opportunity arises, which might be this week. I just thought if somebody happened to have one, 
<laughs> for this, then I could have two cabinet scrapers. And Tim thought he had one, but it's too small. Tim's, Tim's is too small. And mine is bigger. That's all I'm saying. I cut your thumb on your router blade when I was sharpening it. And that was a ridiculous thing to do. Resin cast the screw head. No. This thumb screw conversation gets better every time we have it. Yep. And we will keep having it whenever I want because I have the microphone and you will listen to every damn thing I have to say. You can make your own YouTube show. Talk about whatever you want. Beep. It's not the size of your screw, it's the amount of threads you can use when screwing. Let's be honest, it's both. Okay. My cabinet scraper has a bigger screw than Tim's. <laughs> Does that mean it's earlier or later? Did, is that the distinction? Would that help any in terms of like if, if we could actually put a date to this bad boy, would that help get you a size? Because sometimes Stanley does stuff like that. Like, oh, if it uses this piece, then it was 18... 94 or whatever. Like, did they move to the skinnier screw after the war or something like that? Uh, my cabinet scraper has its screw. It's true. Yours is more functional than mine. Is yours an 80M? What does that even mean? Truthfully, your cabinet scraper doesn't have any screws. It has these. It has these two. Maybe we could get a patent date off this and it would help date it. It's got a stamp. I can't read it. It's really small. and it's on it. it it's too small Eight twenty three fourteen. I got 8 dash 2 slash 14 8 dash 23 dash 14 patent numbers on this piece Not the iron, look at the body. The, are the, oh, take the thing out. The number 80, Stanley, is all that's stamped that I can see. Got Stanley. On the back, I got in there, number 80. I got patent dates on the little crossbar piece. It doesn't matter. Your screw is too small. The, the long and short of it is that you have a tiny screw that won't work. <laughs> I, I sincerely appreciate you checking. Yours is an 80M. Mine says N O 
eight oh. It's gonna be hard to see. I get number eighty is all it says on there. That means mine's better than yours. Yours is the yours is the M edition. That's the cheaper one. That was Stanley's mediocre line. The Stanley started issuing the M series of stuff uh, for the poor's. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um. No, I have a screw that works for mine, a screw that I was hoping would work for you, but you have a big hole. It's true, my hole is bigger than yours. Even a 747 looks small in the Grand Canyon. It's true. Kaplaz here. How you doing, my friend? We are off the rails, as usual. Um, welcome. It's a bunch of nonsense. We have been talking about tools a little bit. We're talking about things that I'm making. What are you making these days? We were talking about science fiction television shows for a little bit, way back at the beginning. <coughs> I know you're a big Star Trek guy. I think my if I was going to say I had a favorite science fiction television series, it would have to be Battlestar Galactica, the new, the, the, the re imagining, re jigging one that happened in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. With Katie Sackhoff and Zach Braff. Inside joke from earlier. Cuba Gooding Jr. We've been having a good time. Let's just, let's say we've been having a good time. Knight Rider or Airwolf. Neither of which would qualify as a science fiction. Or is that the, are you just saying pick one or the other? I did enjoy both of them. I, it's a coin flip. I'll take, if only one of them could exist, I will watch it. Whichever one it is. Us original terms of service guys are fine with the Trekkies label. It was the newer guys who started the Trekker stuff. Uh, is there a discussion about whether you're called Trekkies or Trekkers? I didn't know that was a thing. The original series. I'm being hilarious. I'm, I'm having a really funny night tonight, you guys. Like, I, I'm. Some of them are quite subtle, but like, I know it, it, it's. I'm having I'm having more fun making these jokes than you guys are having receiving them. talking car or a jet powered aircraft aren't sci-fi enough it just it i think i think it's a i think in order for something to be considered science fiction it doesn't just need to be like a piece of technology like for me it needs more than that in terms of its depth of exploration
You do you. You can call it science fiction if you want. I'm not going to argue about what qualifies as science fiction. Are we? We might. I could see it happening. I'll try not to. It just, it, science fiction, in order for something to qualify as science fiction to me, it needs to have, it needs to feel like science fiction, if that makes sense. Like, just be like a made up piece of technology that doesn't exist in the real world, but is included in a show that's otherwise unchanged reality from the one in which we live. It doesn't qualify for me. By today's standards, Kit isn't that far away. Yeah, I would say that Kit could absolutely exist using today's technology. And that's why I don't consider the series a science fiction series. Because it's just like regular today life on the planet, but with talking car. Right? Sci-fi is science fiction. I wish they would quit lumping it in with fantasy. I understand that point. I agree with you. I also understand why it gets lumped in. Because it's make-believe imagination land. Let's put it all together and call it make-believe imagination land. I get it. I agree with you. I don't like it. Same with like post-apocalyptic fiction. I don't think should qualify as either one of those things. I think speculative fiction... Post-apocalyptic vision. I, I would like to have more subcategories of things than. I don't think, *Hands Made's Tale* should be in fantasy or science fiction, really, for that matter. I don't think *The Dispossessed* by Ursula K. Le Guin, one of my favorite novels of all time, if not my favorite novel of all time. Uh should necessarily be in science fiction in terms of its genre consideration is widely considered to be a fantastic science fiction novel i want to disagree i i understand why it's there I think I'm going to hit the bed since I've only got 10% life left. Don't waste it. <laughs> that was well done. That was well done. I hope you know that I'm just busting your chops because we're friends. Why travels here? Hello. Space Marines fighting aliens is both. Space Marines fighting, fighting aliens is both what? Fantasy and science fiction? I mean, all science fiction qualifies as a fantasy. Is it? It's like a, a all squares are rhombuses. Not all rhombuses are squares. All science fiction is fantasy. All speculative fiction is fantasy. That's why things fall under the fantasy umbrella. Because even like al alternative histories, people like reimagining the what ifs of the past and having a separate timeline and whatever, this is all fantasy by definition. Mike is going to feel terrible if something happens to Paul. I would feel terrible, I, I feel terrible every time 
somebody doesn't show up for a while because I don't know. There's lots of bad can happen in the world. And when I don't see somebody for a while, I start to th wonder whether or it, you can absolutely move on and not say anything about moving on and that's fine. But just know that I'm going to wonder if you still exist. <laughs> all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Yeah, that was the point that I made with Rombi. Okay? I'm just using different words. Which Starship Troopers movie was the worst? I didn't know there was one. There, there was more than one. Except rhombus isn't correct. A rhombus isn't right angles. Every, I believe the definition of a rhombus is a shape in which all four sides are the same length. Regardless of the angles. And the opposite, I believe it, all four sides are the same length and the opposite angles are equal to each other. The opposing angles of a rhombus are equal to each other and all four sides are the same length, I believe is what a rhombus is. So a square would qualify because the opposing angles are equal to each other and all four sides are the same. That's a parallelogram. No, a, a parallelogram is a rhombus is a specific kind of parallelogram. Any par, a parallelogram is the opposing angles are the same as each other, but it not all four sides need to be the same length. In a rom, a rhombus is a parallelogram of which all four sides are the same length. Go fact check me. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm not happy to be wrong. But I can admit when I'm wrong. I've been wrong at least four times. Aramis has two acute and two obtuse angles, not square angles. Interesting. I just thought that the opposing ones needed to be the same. Which they would naturally be if all four sides are the same length. I didn't realize the definition had obtuse and acute in. Where are you getting the definition from? Like I said, I'm, I'm fine being wrong. I have always been under the assumption that a square was technically a rhombus because all four sides are the same length and the opposing angles are the same. I didn't realize there was a definition of obtuse acute. Parallelogram with opposite equal acute angles, opposite equal obtuse angles, and four equal sides. Any parallelogram with equal sides, including a square. Ah, wait. Well, then the first sentence... Riveting Saturday Night content. Good point. This is this is why I make the big bucks here on YouTube. I'm gonna ask a mathematician, a, a geometrist. That's who I'm gonna consult. I'm gonna consult a geometrist. And say, is a square a rhombus? And they're going to say yes or no. That Because that's the answer I want right now. Does a square qualify as a rhombus? It's an equilateral quadrilateral. Yep. So is a rhombus. 
A rhombus and a square are both equilateral quad quadrilaterals. Are they not? Somebody get us a geometrist. Penel! <laughs> Find us a geometrist. <laughs> okay, okay, digging deeper. Yes, a square is a rhombus. I, I know things. This, this, we've, this, this, one of the... One of the reasons that people come here for the riveting content is because I make things and I know things. And sometimes they aren't connected, but... What did Shannon say when you told him you were a big deal? I haven't told him yet. Uh, all squares are rhombuses. All rhombuses cannot be squares because rhombuses are not always equal angular. Yes. Literally what I said out loud. And you guys both went to the same site, apparently, to find out that information. <laughs> the adjacent sides of a rhombus are not always perpendicular to each other. No, because then it, it would be a square. In fact, by definition. I thought we didn't come here to learn. No, we don't specifically come here to learn. We come here and learn. You don't come here for that purpose, but come here and it happens by accident. All I found was a geometroist who was an expert in 90s GM cars. Well, I'm going to need you to refine your search parameters, okay? There has to be a geometrist who, well, we've answered the question and I was correct. Ta-da. <laughs> why, do why do you guys doubt me when I say things? Probably because sometimes I'm just making shit up and it's like, obviously, Zach Braff was not Shazam. But he said it like it was for real. So now we don't know if we can trust him. I get it. I get it. But a square is a rhombus. And I'm actually pretty proud that I got <laughs> proven correct at that. I was willing to admit, if by definition I was correct, I was incorrect, I would have happily accepted that. But I am quite happy that I was, in fact, correct. Because I've been making that reference for a long time. And I... If I was proven to be incorrect on that, I would look back at every time I said that and been like, you were fucking wrong and you should feel bad about that because you said it with such authority. <laughs> My dad drove semis and drove a Metro convertible. I didn't know that the Geo Metro came in convertible. I don't think, did I? Maybe I did. Maybe I did know that. Was Unstoppable the movie about the runaway train sci-fi since a train can't really do what that one did? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see it. I didn't see Unstoppable the science fiction movie about a runaway train. Yeah, looked them up very small. Well, the Geo Metro was very small, so obviously the convertible version would also be very small. Why travel? God. <laughs> I 
I'm having a, I'm having a, a funny good mood day. I apologize. No, I don't. Don't. Don't let it hit you. If I, if I come at you, just. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Uh, water off a duck's back and all that. You know, we're all have we're here together, being friends, having a good time. I don't mean any of it. If I if I'm making little digs and burns, never drove a Geo Metro, but I did use Geo Works software. I don't know what that is, and I am happy about that. Had a Geo Dragon. Just pretend it's funny. That's the first step. The first step is pretending it's funny. The second step is admitting it's funny. The third step is appreciating its hilarity. You're welcome. So my, my new three-step program, all you need to do is leave me your, is, is leave me your email address down in the comment section and, and I will sign you up for our newsletter. And all you need to do is register for the, the, this one simple class. I will teach you the three-step process uh, that I have developed over years of research. <laughs> that I'm giving to you at a huge discount, 98% off. If you act now, it's a limited time offer. Just you, before YouTube takes this video down because of how good this offer is, you need to, you need to subscribe using the link. I got high marks in my geology classes in high school 30 years ago. I was pretty good at geology. I was pretty good at geology. I did a fair bit of that. I did like topographical maps and different kinds of, um, that's geography, uh, st stones and rocks and, a, and mm. nobody got my a bed juke joke earlier. Same show. So she thought it was like the class was geography. And I said, we don't study rocks in here. No, it was the opposite of that. Doesn't matter. Didn't work. Never mind. That's geography, my dude. I know. It took me a second. I'm sure there was some topographical mapping involved in geo in in geology class. In fact, yes, I'd know that there was because I, I I got a a bachelor's of arts, and when you get a a BA, a general BA, I got a specific BA, but your general overarching bachelor's of arts. You have to take all of the nonsense bullshit classes to make up like science qualifications and all this stuff. So I did take some geography and, and, and geology both in university. And I'm sure that there was a, a, some topographical map usage in terms of geology. In terms of referencing where in the Earth's strata, various forms of rock tend to form. Wouldn't have been a topographical map, though, would it? Would have been a subterranean map. Okay. I made an incorrect reference. By technicality. And we're going to move on. I I can admit when I was wrong. That's at least five now. Six, maybe, times that I've been wrong. Still pretty high percentage. Those are 
right about the rhombus. <laughs> Smoke and beer. Ah. Hopefully it's not still super bright and I can open this up. Oh, yeah. Ah, still light out, but not beaming the sun into the shop. No shame. Openly, freely admit your mistakes, then move past them. <laughs> Makes the world a better place when we do that. I'm also going to go beside my house for a minute and do a urination process. Oh, what I miss. Urination process does involve valves and some spigot. Well, it's an organic process, but it is a process nonetheless. Things need to work together in order for the uh, result to be accomplished. Not a great way to say that, but accurate. Anything else you guys want to talk about tonight? Oh, I love this show. It's just all over the place and it makes and it makes me happy. It's always light outside my front door. We have an on at dusk light. Oh, like a when the when it gets too dim outside, it just turns on automatically. That's cool. We have some of those on the back deck that just turn on when it gets dusk and they wrap around the railing that goes around the deck. Like solar controlled type thing. has conspired to stop talking so that the show will end. <laughs> I've heard many, probably, people use the expression, oh well. I've never seen a square well. I thought they were all shaped like O's. Hey -o! Yeah, hey -o. Have I ever seen a square well? Nope, you're right. Because it's way easier to dig a 
circular hole. The depth of a well. Then it would be, you know, like, why would you square off the sides of it? Yeah. Romans, probably. Some square digging for their aqueduct systems. They're very geometric in a lot of ways. The Romans. Uh, you have to admit, a well can be a really deep subject. It can. It can. It could be a, a shallow subject as well. You were quiet so you could use your urination process. Oh, you guys were just... You guys were so quiet because you were listening. So you could try and hear the... Bunch of weirdos. It's okay. Weird in the right way. Weird in the right way, and you're welcome to be here. Don't make me get the guitar until my phone goes dead. Okay? That's that's that should be the threat. Not like I'll like we'll end the show if nobody talks. The threat should be I will get the guitar. Don't make me. This is gonna be nice. This is gonna be nice. The live show guitar is gonna be nice. Just had a little glitch, little disconnect. A square well is a finite potential well. Let me get the joke, it'll take me a second. Didn't immediately connect, but I think that was funny. Because otherwise it'd be infinite, finite, maybe. I don't get the joke. Explain it to me. <laughs> I want to get the joke. I don't really like math. But I like math jokes. I like I like jokes that are that are intelligent. I like jokes that I like jokes that you don't understand if you're stupid. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Focusing on another shock rebuild. You're building you're rebuilding the shocks on your Traxxas Everest tricks for Laredo. An extension of the infinite potential well in which a particle is confined to a box, but one which has finite potential. Okay. I, yeah, I like it. At one point, I thought when I was <laughs> maybe 13 or 14, I thought I had a way to create a, a light bomb. Because I was learning about refraction and reflection and the angle of influence and the angle of refraction through a sheet of glass into a shape. And I, in my head, I was piecing together a way that you could shine a beam of light, like a laser, into a, a glass form and it would re refract into that glass form and then reflect within the glass form and you could if you could figure out the way to get that angle of refraction to go inside and not refract back out but reflect within you could create essentially an infinite amount of light within a clear box, essentially. Um, I don't think it's possible, but at the time, I think the theory was sound. 
because theoretically the angle of refraction of is going to change the angle that light goes inside of the box and if now that second angle reflects within the inside of the box you could fill a a box with an infinite amount of light and it would continue to absorb light and it would also be a way to prove whether or not light is a particle or a wave because if it's a particle it would not be able to contain an infinite amount of light because eventually the mass of the particles would fill the box and it would explode We just solved it. How how did we just solve it? A white bread like Italian. Italians are not like white bread. What? <laughs> I'm clearly I thought I'm I'm on live chat, so I'm just clearly missing some parts. Oh, I'm baking bread. What kind of bread? A white bread like Italian. Oh, okay, okay, okay. A self, I designed a self winding grandfather clock, but can't really exist because it would be perpetual motion. See? But the, theori the theoretical things to think about are cool. Oh, Matt's here. I missed a Starship Troopers conversation. Yeah, you did. You missed a lot of things. Gotta, gotta try to be here, my friend. We've gone in a lot of directions. Um, I watched the 3D CG cartoony ones. I didn't know that there were more than... I did, I don't, I'm not sure I knew there were more than two. I knew there were Starship Troopers and another one. And I remember Starship Troopers. This is what I remember. Okay. I remember Starship Troopers being uh, space military goes and fights giant bugs with the hot girl from Wild Things. That's what I remember. I st honestly, I still don't remember her name. Um, she was naked in Wild Things with Nev Campbell. She was very attractive to a 14-year-old boy at the time. And her titties were out. That's... I'm just being honest. Somebody help me out. Um, I was doing, I was doing dog stuff. Much cute. Okay, fair. Yeah, fair enough. Denise Richardson, that's her. Richards, Denise Richards. Yes. As a as a 14, 15 year old boy at the time. That had a sequel too. <laughs> Did it? That's unfortunate. two-way mirror globe with a mirror on the inside. With the mirror on the inside so the light can come in and through the mirror and then refract around within the globe. 
why has nobody done this? Right? Isn't that a potentially perfect way to test whether light is a particle or a wave? Because if it's if it's a particle, you can't you can fill it. If it's a wave, you can't. Can you? No. It would need to be. It would need to have mass in order to fill the inside of the globe. Once it enters, you would start filling it up with light. And if it's a if it's a particle, if it has mass, it would explode because it could only contain so much. Somebody call Stanford or here for no oh, Natasha Henstridge was the Bobs in Species. Yes, she was in the pool. Um, maybe Mike was talking about Wild Things itself. Wild Things, the movie with Denise Richards and Nev Campbell and Ethan Hawke? Zach Braff. Um, for me, it was Phoebe Cates in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. We all... We all have her. I was a I was a big fan as a teenager of um, Tiffany Amber Thiessen from Saved by the Bell. Be honest, just being honest. This is these are not things I want to be talking about. It's another weird direction for the show to go. Denise Richards. Mike Bennett is... You, somebody tell Mike to scroll forward because we're... Or did it... Mike, did it take you like seven minutes to type Denise Richards? Because somebody should call you an ambulance if that's the case. Are you having a stroke? Okay, with e equal e, I'm guessing equals mc squared in mind. Does a cell phone with memory filled with songs heavier than a cell phone with a blank memory? Well, the 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 question is whether uh, electronic information has a mass. I don't think that Einstein's theory of relativity actually impacts the question about whether digital information has a mass. Like Times New Roman. <laughs> that's funny. That's, that's good. I like that. This has been tested. An empty flash drive has no more mass or weight than a full one. Yeah, because I don't think digital information... Yeah, digital information is, is, is not particles. <laughs> nice story. Oh, was that... Was that... Was that funny? Is that a burn? Was that you making reference? Were you hearkening back? Because that's funny. That if if so, that was pretty. That was pretty okay. <sighs> Flash memory is never empty. It's all ones and zeros until it gets rewrote. 
Come on. Rewrote. With some different ones and zeros. I feel like he used the word re the, the not word rewrote on purpose to bug me because that's the kind of person that he is. Glad I didn't have to explain it. I catch I catch a lot of things. Which is heavier, a pound of feathers or a pound of lead. They're the same weight. They're not the same mass. They're, yes. So it depends on what your definition of heavier is. But pound is a measure of weight based on the gravitational pull on them. They absolutely have a different volume, it's true. There are two options there. See, see, people think we're friends. <laughs> but you're, you literally only come here to bother me. And hurt my brain. You have to live with the weight of killing all those chickens to get a pound of feathers. I have no moral qualms whatsoever about killing enough chickens to get a pound of feathers. Because they can all die. Like the chickens, they just kill them all, eat them. They're delicious. It's why they exist. The chickens that we know as chickens today only exist because we have created them to be killed and eaten. Murder them, eat them, they're delicious, move on. The coyote is faster. Oh, hold on. What is happening? Which is faster, coyote or roadrunner? The Roadrunner, the physical bird that exists in real life, or the cartoon character? Uh, I think, hold on. Actually, I think Coyote is faster, and hear me out. He always gets ahead of the Roadrunner and sets up traps. The Roadrunner is just smarter. Are we talking about the cartoon characters or the actual animals that exist in real life? This important qualification for us to determine an answer to the question. Because coyotes and rogue runners in real life on the planet Earth, yeah, a coyote is faster than a rogue runner. In the cartoon by Hanna-Barbera, You're right. You're probably right. The coyote is probably faster, but stupid. Because he stops and waits to try and trick, but he's an idiot. Warner Brothers. What? Yeah. It's not Hannah Barrer. Why did I think it was? If we're talking about these are characters created by a company. Uh, 
Coyotes can outpace Roadrunners substantially. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. 43 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour. That's more than twice as many miles an hour. The cartoon is not an accurate representation. Right? I think we should all have a, some kind of online boycott. Hissy fit about how cartoons are not accurate. <laughs> Mustang 5.0 Coyote or 70 Plymouth Roadrunner. Ooh, cars. Somebody else is going to have to take that because I'm not a big enough car guy. I know what cars I like. Mostly it's because of their aesthetic. Whether they are pleasing aesthetically to me. And sometimes for fuel efficiency and efficiency, like the other ideas do. But I don't know anything about... Well, and first of all, a Mustang, a 5.0 Mustang, what year? I would take... Not a 90s Mustang over just about anything because those things were ugly as shit but with their crappy hatchback looking thing. The Mustangs in the 80s and 90s. Meh. Meh. Is this the debate of the night? There's no debate. We're bobbing and weaving with wherever the conversation goes, Brian. Uh, the debate of the night is which font. <laughs> we have we have talked about whether or not you have a favorite font. Brian went to design school. Brian probably has a favorite font. And he probably has a good reason for that being his favorite font. Probably has a better answer than the rest of you idiots. Uh, coincidence, the 90s Mustangs were when Ford owned a large amount of BMW and used their designers for the Mustang. I don't know if I would call that a coincidence by definition, but I know what you mean. The General Lee was a charger. This is true. Was that a question? Dukes of Hazard was a roadrunner. Nope. Your Kapla is correct. I'm, I'm fairly certain. The Dukes of Hazards was a charger. I could I could be wrong for a sixth time. I think it was a charger. Yeah, it does nineties Mustangs. Yeah. Yeah. One of those gross 90s Mustangs or one of those gross 90s Firebird things with the gaudy, like, fire, the abstract Firebird painted on the hood. Oh, why did I just would you rather myself? I accidentally would you rather to myself. Meh. I, I guess the Firebird. I guess the Firebird. Because it. you could paint over the, th the thing on the hood. And it would kind of be coolish.
That was, that was, I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> For giving myself those choices. In any case. <laughs> I would rather have, since apparently we're talking about cars now, I would rather have one of those kit, like fake Lamborghinis that was made out of a Fiero than either one of those cars. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. I stand by that. Because at least that would be a, a cool story. That this used to be a Fiero and now it's... This kit thing that got built. At least there's a story there. As opposed to just being a shitty automobile. A lot of different directions tonight, my friends. And in no particular order. Like, it, it doesn't even really make sense how one went into the other. Beer! Mike, you got those shocks changed yet on your Traxxas Everest? <coughs> Plymouth Rock, question mark. Real or fake? The location? Is there, is there a debate about whether or not there is a place called Plymouth Rock? I, I can't confirm or deny. I've never been to it. But I want to think that enough people have referenced the location to say that it's a real place. But I have no, I have no proof, I guess, is the actual answer. Moon landing, question mark? Yes. I'm going to go with yes. It is my belief that humans landed on the moon. Again, I don't know. I can only say what I think is most likely. And I think that we did do that. We, I, I had nothing to do with it. We didn't land on the moon. I, I was not involved. Humans, yes, landed on the moon. <laughs> Why do we park in a driveway and drive on a parkway? Because the English language is garbage. And we have named things very, very poorly. That was, that was a mean thing for me to say. The English language is not garbage. It's really, really good. It's overly complicated, and we name things badly. Part of why we name things badly in English is because we take our English words from various other languages, and we can't really consolidate those things. Some of our words 
have Greek roots, and some of them have Roman roots, some of them have Latin roots, and some of them we just make up. Uh, so it's, yeah. I've been to see Plymouth Rock, whether it's legit or not, who knows. But it is an, a place, right? Brian, you have been to a place that is called Plymouth Rock. So yes, Plymouth Rock exists as a place. I don't know what this, what the dis, the actual dispute is. So you should say it's rubbish. You should not tell me what I should say. love the flat earth stuff because the illustrations and explanations they came up with are amazingly inventive. I'm not convinced. I am not convinced that flat earthers are not just intentionally trolling the rest of the world just to be like having a good time. I can't really see another explanation. You can't actually believe these things. Can you? I guess you could, but I think most of them are just fucking with us and pretending like they believe these things. But I feel that way about a lot of things that I'm not going to get into right now on the show because I like the community that we've built and everybody's allowed to feel how they feel about stuff. And it's great. Uh, join the Flat Earth Society. We meet every Wednesday. <laughs> I'll be there. What's the second oldest city in the U.S.? Baltimore. Well, it also depends on your definition of city. Philadelphia, obviously, constitutes a city. Does Akron? Ohio? Count as a city? Uh... Yes, there is literally a Plymouth Rock, and it's got a structure built on the top of it. There we go. We have a first-hand account that Plymouth Rock exists. It is a place. Put it to bed. Put that one to bed. just that many people know the oldest city but who knows the second oldest city it's just like I don't know why it's a thing like an argument or whatever that needs to happen who gives a shit what in what order cities were settled in hundreds of years ago we, can we take care of more important things in the world than argue about what the oldest city is? There's much, many, 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 much, much more important things for us to discuss about whether or not Plymouth Rock was a place that the pilgrims got to or I'm not gonna do it. Whether billionaires should exist. It's a much more important thing to talk about. JFY. St. Mary's, Georgia is supposed to be the second oldest city. I, I'm going to go with Akron, Ohio. For no reason. Except that I want to mention it as a place. I 
think I might have one more smokerette. And then I think if we... We can hang out for as long as my phone has. What do we got? I got 40%. We'll go until it's risking losing the feed. Why not? Why not? It's what happens every other week. I got a I got a commission job. Oh, don't. If you're a woodworker, do not take commission jobs for things like can you refin can you refinish these salt and pepper shakers that my grandpa made. Don't take these jobs. It's not worth the time and effort to do this. I've I said yes because I that's what I do. Don't take on these types of jobs. Absolutely not worth your time and effort. I have to tend to my bread. Okay. We'll see you next time, my friend. I'm trying not to buy stuff. I want a Gramercy Tools bow saw kit. I can understand that. Like, I want that and I'll never use it. You actually might use it. I, I want that just from hearing you say it. And I know that I will never use that tool. But now that you've said that that's a thing, I, I, I do want it. Sorry, I still here. Had to take some progress pics and lost my place. Well, yeah, because you gotta you gotta feed the Instagram algorithm machine. I would like to see a reel of the uh, of the shock change on your Traxxas Everest Mark IV Laredo. I played with them at Handworks. It's a fun challenge to build. It's just a big coping saw. Yeah. Shannon Rogers, my friend, my friend Shannon Rogers uh, was recommending. I, oh, it might have been a bad act. I, was say, I watched a video with him making a bow saw. Was it a bow saw? Or it was a frame saw. That was red. And it was a kit that was produced by it might have been bad axe. Never mind. Let's just ignore the fact that that's a thing. But I wonder. I wonder if I could make a a frame saw rigid enough to tighten an old dead bandsaw blade that I resharpened to do resaw work by hand with like a half inch 3 TPI bandsaw blade chunk that make it do saying it out loud makes me want to try doing it Like nine people would watch me try to do that if I made a if I did that and made a video of it. Like at least nine people would watch that video. Hmm. <laughs> I have many old dead bandsaw blades. I actually thought I thought at one point about making like a, a Shinto style rasp 
with dead bandsaw blades. Because that's essentially what's happening in here. It's a bunch of crisscrossy bandsaw blades. At one point I did try I did think about making old dead bandsaw blades into a rasp. That stumpy guy did a Taylor Tools version of it a video a week ago. I don't know what that's referencing. I'm going to be honest and say that I don't care. Because he's just trying to sell you something to make money for himself. Has anybody ever seen that guy make a piece of furniture? Like, on, yeah, I've said it before, and I always feel bad when I say it. But does a video... Do, do we know that that guy has ever made anything of quality that we should be believing him in his the way that he says things? Because I could be, it could be my seventh time being wrong. And maybe he makes gorgeous pieces of furniture. And I've just never seen it happen. But somebody please tell me if that's a thing. Because I don't want to have a negative opinion of him if it's unwarranted. Because it's unwarranted. saws again but yeah okay i want like five thousand dollars in veritas stuff so i mean it's a disaster i'll never financially recover yeah fair hmm. but he, not everything has to be a return on investment financially it's a all of the things that i've bought from veritas are a return on my investment in pleasure of use he makes them for himself and doesn't share think he would be better off at least sharing them once in a while if that's the case i think he should just show them once in a while just to be like hey see i i have some sort of frame of reference here he makes money yeah yeah that's kind of what i was getting at We're all on our own journey. <laughs> Everybody can do what they do and like what they like and be who they want to be. <coughs> I sent you a picture of Plymouth Rock. I wish I could look at it right now live on the show, but I'll, I'll look at it after. He has claimed to make stuff. Sure, at this point, you could say the same for me. No, you can't, because I've literally documented myself making things. Dude, I saw an anniversary marking gauge on a tool dealer site. Sold out after 10 minutes for a very reasonable price. Happened today. Half what was on eBay once. Sold there for 
anniversary marking gauge. The the Veritas anniversary marking gauge. So we, the, but the, it's a collectible or whatever. Right? People are buying it as a collectible. Like I've got tree beard. Or the limited edition Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff marking knife. Which, by the way, I still have a couple of those, if you're interested. I don't have one here to show you. They're in the house, and I don't feel like getting them. They are amazing. Check out the link that my buddy Pinnell is going to put in the chat to the Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff limited edition marking knife, if you're interested. Um, it's not going to be that link. He made a drum sander, did he? <laughs> or is that hearkening back? Because that's funny. Hope they bring back that stuff for the 50 year anniversary because yeah i like anniversary limited edition stuff from quality tool makers i do i i would very much like to have that shiny spaceship looking block plane that veritas made uh that's like the dx60 but it's all shiny silver i think that was a limited edition block plane i don't know the model number of it but it's an expensive ass piece of veritas i think it's I think it's got a 60 in it, but it's not the DX60. This is the DX60. The, the version of this block plane in all chrome that Veritas made. I will admit that I would like one. I will not pay <laughs> what the going rate is for those. If I wasn't on mobile, I'd link a Stumpy Notes video. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be pork chops. Stumpy showed a bed frame and an end table dog cage about two years ago. No videos of them on them or plans or anything. It's, this sounds about right. I feel... I Do I? I was going to say, I feel bad pointing out to people the, these pieces of information that should be relevant. We're all journey we're looking at the bright side of life Just look at the bright side of life we're looking at the good things in the world i wish i had an example right now a couple weeks ago i had an example to pop up and be like the teenager kid like picked a piece of something up off the parking lot put it back in my arms when I was having trouble. I don't have one this week. I wish I did. I like I like to see the good that's happening around me. People pay me to teach epoxy resin. It's true. It's a surface coating. It's a it's a chemical reaction compound acrylic and inks and pigments and things that's creating a surface on top of anything. And people pay me to teach them that. It's true. But I have physical proof 
of me being able to do that. <laughs> In fact, they watch me do it first before I let them try it. So it's like, you're not just believing me that I can do it. I'm showing you that I can do it. I'm explaining to you how to do it. If I did it really shittily, you'd be like, why are we learning this from him? He is shit at this. Why? And then I'd get complaints and then Nadia would be all like, you're fired. And, and then I'd be destitute living under a bridge. These things lead to each other. Oh, there's Nadia right there. They pay you. It's true. They pay you to pay me to teach them that. It's true, if we're being technical about that. But again, if I did the example and they were like, I don't want that, that's shit. Things would go downhill really quickly from there. <laughs> Time to get another smoked old fashioned. Nice. Nice. In any case, I take credit for your resin talents. You can take credit for anything you'd like. I provide a lot of additional supplementary information to my students that is probably irrelevant <laughs> to the process that they're trying to learn that you don't have <laughs> because of my background in using epoxy resins in different situations. I did, one of the women today in one of the classes did tell me that I should probably make a new YouTube video because of how entertaining and informative I was. Just saying. We have different teaching styles and that it's a, one of the beautiful things about where we are and what we do is we have a lot of different instructors that have different teaching styles and different methodologies. methodologies and uh, ways of getting information across, and it's, it's wonderful. Actually, somebody asked me today if, if I would consider teaching a, a deep cast, like resin river table type class, and I was like, it would be a multi-week thing I'd have to bring in table saws and stuff it was just too complicated there might be a way to figure it out to do a simplified version of casting epoxy resin gaps in pieces of wood in very small groups at some point maybe it would be expensive though <laughs> it's interesting thinking about woodworking personalities and if they really need to be skilled at woodworking some are so good at photography and good enough at woodworking it's true and some people just fight their way through using charisma <laughs> There's 
there's balancing, right? There's a, it's when you're presenting information, some of it's the information that you're presenting and whether it's good. Some of it's whether your, pre your presentation is good. And some of it is your rapport with the people you're presenting it to. And some of it has uh, it balances between those things. Nadia and I could, Nadia is a much better oil painter than I am. She is much more technically knowledgeable about what's happening when you put a paintbrush into your paint and do the thing with the thing. I think I have an energy that some people respond to better and therefore may or may not learn better from or have a, a, a better time with their experience through that engagement. It's a different process. It's a different way of communicating ideas for different ways of bringing those ideas into yourself. Some people like very structured, technical, informational, step-by-step -step type things. Some people want to just... Everybody learns differently. Some people read and absorb. Some people watch videos and absorb. Some people experience and absorb by trial and error, and that's the way they learn best. There's no right or wrong way to go about teaching and or learning. Come on. And some are not good at either. I think that was probably trying to be a burn, but it didn't work because he's not good at burns. It sometimes that's not true. Sometimes he has a good burn. Rex K versus Bourbon Moth versus Cosman versus the Wood Whisperer versus uh, the football player guy versus Mike's Wooden Things and stuff. First, they're all different ways of presenting information. Obviously, I don't have the way that I present information is not as good is not as <laughs> not as many people like that one I guess are you saying I'm less charismatic I'm saying you're charismatic your your charisma is different than mine and people respond differently to the, your way of teaching than they do to mine. There's no right or wrong. There's no more or less. I think... I think I'm better... I might be better at pretending like I'm enjoying this than you do. <laughs> That's... I, I'm I'm actively trying not to pretend that I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Different ways of communicating ideas. Yeah, but you do unboxings. Not really. Yeah, I've done a couple. It's true. Freaking John Malecki. Yeah, that's him. I'm no Wrangler star or Matthias. These are true statements. I am neither one of those people. I'm okay with that. Where are we at in terms of battery power? <laughs> 33. We can go for a little ways. We can, we'll shut her down. We're not going... We're not going four and a half. I don't have the power for it, but we'll go for a bit. Are you saying that I, I'm less charismatic? Come on. Beer.
He brings up the lawlessness, but literally came from the place. Hurts my head. Whoa. Who? Rang oh, Wrangle Star. Went to college in Portland. He is really dumb. I do not. I don't want even to. I would rather we never talk about him again. If that's okay with us. As much as I don't like Matthias coming up on the show, I get it because it's funny and whatever. We can, if we could just never talk about Wrangle Star or whatever the shit his name is, if we could forget that that ever happened and never do it again, that would be great. And I am going to move on. I would rather, I would rather talk about who's cooler as an instructor, me or my boss, than have that name ever be mentioned again. <laughs> After 15 years, after 15 years of teaching art, I get to pass the torch so I can say, so I can stay charismatic and enjoy teaching the things I really want to teach. Shouldn't have to pretend I enjoy it anymore. I absolutely agree with you. And I am more than happy to do the things that I also want. To, and I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to learn things that I want to learn. To the point where I can pass them along to somebody else as well. And to, to if you have things that you don't want to do anymore. That I also don't want to do anymore. Or don't want to do. We'll find somebody else that wants to do them. It's what we're supposed to do. As an organization. And as a, a beneficial artistic member of this community. We want to give people the tools that they need. Can you stop it, skateboard kid? We want to give people the tools that they need to endeavor into the artistic ways that they want to go through the world. And however that needs to happen is what we're going to do. When I don't want to do resin classes anymore, we'll give them to somebody else and who is enthusiastic about learning and doing and blah, 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 blah. blah. I've never seen Nadia, so I can't answer that. It's true. You you pop by sometime, and you take a class with each of us, and then you can decide who you like better, and then you can place your vote in the jar that we'll have at the front counter that just says, like, who's a better teacher? And people can vote. <laughs> I would, in no way, in no way would I want to learn watercolor techniques from me. Because even if I knew them well enough to pass them along, I would clearly hate my life while I was doing it. I'd be like, just do this, you fucking idiot. Just, just fucking do what I did, dummy. That's probably not what would happen, but that I don't want to do that. I would not be good at passing that information along to somebody else. So I'm not going to. <laughs> a 
but you have seen Mike. It's true, he has seen me, and he keeps coming back. Obviously, there is something. There is something here that it keeps bringing him back. So, so do you. <laughs> I mean, I know you're an employee, and you have to keep coming back, have to keep coming back. But I don't pay you enough for this nonsense. If you ever just not want to not come, because this sucks for you, you just let me know. <laughs> I think you would like these bolts. I think I would like, I probably would like taking a stained class class with Stephanie. Probably would enjoy that. She's probably pretty good at getting the information across in a way that I would be receptive to it. I don't know. I watched a video where they use string soaked in paint and pull the string and the way it drags make flowers. I have seen a few videos like that as well. It's neat. Put in the paperwork and it will be reviewed in 30 to 60 days. Are you trying to get fired right now? <laughs> I may have an opening. Available on the Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff team. Um, I'll have to review the paperwork and see what Pinnell actually means by that. But uh, there may be an opening. Um, if anybody's interested. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That was the perfect answer. That was, hang on, good stuff. No, we have a, I think, I think we have a fantastic situation in the circumstances that we're in here in our community and we are making fantastic strides towards making it even better. Your face is an opening. Hey, oh! <laughs> uh, nicely done. In the Navy, this is where everyone took a step back and fell right off the edge of the boat. Keep sending stuff to the email address you gave me, but never reply. I may have given you a fake email address. But you, like, see, you say these things. And some idiot is going to watch this and believe you. We have a direct line of communication. We talk all the time. <laughs> He's lying. We have open lines of communication. We talk all the time. About all kinds of things. Chris Pinnell. I think... Wait, I want to make sure it's accurate before I say it. I think Chris Pinnell might be... Chris Pinnell might be my best friend that I've never met. Like, it, of all the people I've never met,
who are my friends. I, I think Chris Bennell might be my, my best never met friend. And I, I would like to publicly thank him for being that person. And that is like the equivalent of your boss getting you a pizza party. <laughs> Paul just took stuff out of a box. <laughs> just with a scowl, too. He's like, Out of all the friends I have that I've met, never met, I think I think Pinnell is probably my best one. Sorry, Pinnell, or sorry, <laughs> sorry, Paul. He's not gonna watch this. He left. He went to bed. He's absolutely not gonna watch this again. So just nobody tell him. One tenth my ass. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> Fucking Canadians. Damn, we have fun. I know there's only a dozen of us or whatever who actually enjoy this, but I, it feels like the dozen of us who enjoy this possibly quite enjoy this. I do. That's that's important. That's important. I was I. Gotta say, this I'm surprised how much I actually got accomplished this week after falling head cold sick early on. Uh, Sunday night this past week, I um, started coming down with a facial sinusy snot throat situation. And I was like pretty incapacitated for 57 or so hours. And then I fought through the last bit of it to get some guitar work done and then bounce back pretty good. I'm still a little bit, this ear isn't hearing all that awesome. And I'm still a little bit kind of, but for how sick I was this week with phlegm and snot and sinuses and throats and stuff, I, I had a pretty good week. In terms of productivity. Now you have to say who your in-person bestie is. So you can make a bunch of people feel bad. My best friend that I've actually met. Is my buddy David Simcox. Who lives in. 108 mile house British Columbia. And all of the rest of you can feel bad if you want, but you don't know what that long-term permanent and always situation is. So that you don't, don't feel bad that you're not as good a friend as he is because um, maybe you might be one day. But I don't think there's, I think there's a very small chance that anyone is ever going to surpass him in terms of a better friend to me who I have met. Seth, my buddy Seth, who is my lead guitar player in my band is very close, probably. Mikey B, in some ways, 
He's right up there. But it's 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 definitely tiers of things. Are you qualifying best friends? Apparently. <laughs> Not because I want to. Anyone using Substack more than just installing and opening it a few times? I'm not sure I know what that is. Isn't that like a pay per blog type situation? Isn't that basically like a Patreon? You create a sub stack and then people pay to access it. I might be wrong. Does he watch your show every week? Dave? No. He shows up sometimes. He's around once in a while, but it doesn't, that's, that's not, I don't base how good my friendship is with somebody, whether or not they watch this nonsense. I'm okay missing American peasant posts. What? Uh, because it's all from the book, and I prefer to just read it. Quish Force has just launched their tool review Substack, and it's five dollars a month on fifty or fifty a year. Yeah, so Substack and Patreon, same kind of idea. It's a subscription service. Mike's wooden wooden things and stuff at Patreon dot com. Patreon.com slash wooden things and stuff. Same kind of idea. Uh, except I'm probably, well, I guarantee you, Chris Schwartz is going to have a lot more awesome information that you can learn from on his. So, I mean, if I'm going to pick one, go do his. But yeah, same kind of idea. It's a private subscription-based access per money. I'm aware of your Patreon, Mike. I know. But we're having the discussion. Some of us aren't, Matt. Okay? Not all of you know. That you can financially support me and get exclusive access to content and fun things that I do. Sometimes I put up pieces of writing that I do. I am in the middle. Oh, speaking of writing. I'm digging back into an old song that I wrote some time ago. That I would like to develop into a thing that might get released at some point that I I think is quite good and I'm looking forward to developing it some more Shannon's podcast has stickers it absolutely does you should go do that L lumber update Patreon.com slash lumber update, I believe, is a place where you can go support my friend Shannon at his efforts. He does have stickers. I I pay him money every month for his effort that he puts in and he sends me a sticker every month and I get to support what he's doing and it makes me feel good because I appreciate it.
I definitely want them. And he said he will likely make packs after time if people keep asking. Yeah, no, I, I was about, I would say three months behind. And I was like, no, I, I, old man shakes fist at cloud. I want the walnut one. <laughs> um, yeah. And he, he's just such a, such a good dude. Cherry was like the second one. I know it was a walnut cherry. I'm looking forward to next month is hornbeam or the, the one that is March, April, March. They're cool stickers. But even it will, it, like, I didn't sign up to get the stickers. I signed up to support him in what he's doing. I have yellow birch and Iroko, I think, are the two stickers that I have. It's cool. I should be better at that. And then you guys could have stickers for me with like swimsuit Mike on the beach or whatever. I send them through the mail. Or information about the tools in my shop. This is a, here's my number 80 cabinet scraper minus the screw. Nice close up of it. And the uh, it's an explanation of where I got it and why I don't use it. Actually, <laughs> that kind of would be a cool sticker. Like Mike's Mike's tools he doesn't use. Mike, Mike, the tool I don't use of the month. <laughs> That's cool. That actually is pretty cool. The, the March Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff tool of the month he doesn't use is my number 80 cabinet scraper that's missing the thumb screw. April could be... I don't want to say I don't use it, but I haven't for a long time. Uh, rosewood. Um, roundover plane. got a 90 degree and then if you see way down in there there's a little blade it's got an eighth inch round over in it i i would like to use this more than an eighth inch round over bit in my router because it's way cooler i just don't Is it sharp? I yeah. Bingo square, if we were still playing. Mike uses a hand plane on the live show. Yeah, go in the wrong direction. But.
That was fun. That was fun. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> I spend my evenings watching Viver influencer videos. Well, that'll help the world. Thanks for making the world a better place. Yeah. You're part of the solution. Twitch, Twitch. <laughs> Got an old molding plane, but couldn't get it sharp enough to use. Well, not with that attitude. Viver picks up where they left off. You, you and me both. This is my bingo prize. He was making the Viver Chuck video. <coughs> yeah, you're right. I was waiting for the guitar, but must go now. Rinse the blue dye out of my hair. I I had blue dye on my... Well, I had blue alcohol ink on my hands for quite some time today. Doing resin vids. Yeah, with you. I threatened I threatened the guitar, but not really feeling it tonight. So thanks for coming, Nadia, my friend. I appreciate you. Go get the blue out of your hair, because your hairdresser won't do her job properly. <laughs> We are going to also wrap this up, I think. Uh, I'm probably getting low on juice. I'm at 24%. So we'll get this thing wrapped up and taken care of for the night. We'll see you next week for possibly most of the non-live show guitar. Like the the non the non Matt Damon. The the non live show guitar should be back to should be up to the state of the live show guitar by next week. Uh, they'll be back to even keel, and we can move forward with those. The new log to thing project may be a little further along by next week i don't know yet how much i want to push that i kind of want to get the guitars out of the way before but that is exciting me and i know that i'm going to want to dig back into it so i'm going to have trouble not digging into that when i'm trying to finish the guitar I want to get the guitars the fuck out of my way so that I can just have them done and off my plate. And then I can do the thing that's exciting me and everything else. But we'll see. Thank you once again for coming. Pinnell, we will review your uh, request for leaving the company. Um it's going to be sad to see you go. But I understand. It's disappointing, but, it is, you know, we all have to make those decisions. And uh, <laughs> stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, everybody. We will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat place. We need vacation time at the end of April. Well, submit your report to HR. God, you know how things need to. You can enjoy the, the generous severance package. I like that. That's. It's a huge. Yeah, the severance package is like 80% of your last three years worth of wage.
That's extremely generous. I think that's extremely generous. 80% of your last three years worth of wages as your severance package? That's pretty generous severance package. Just saying. Bye for now, everybody. The X used to be up there. Now it's up there. That was an important decision to make, you two. Well done with innovating. It was really important that it wasn't over there anymore. But now it's over there. God, if only... If only everyone else in the world would innovate and recognize the important issues to make adjustments like that.